Back in 2017, Derek White was selected as a 29th overall pick by the San Antonio Spurs, known for their high-level recruiting throughout history. But fast forward to today, Derek White has emerged as a top defensive guard in the NBA and is now making significant offensive contributions on one of the best teams in the league. This season also marks a career high in points for White, achieved with impressive shooting percentages of 50% from the field and nearly 43% from three, which are also career highs. That being said, six years ago, there were 28 players who were considered better prospects than Derek White. So, what happened to those 28 players drafted before him? And where are they now? Welcome to Sportsphere. Let's get into it. What I am seeing with my eyes, I am not impressed. His shot is awful. Any, any taker. So, you know, I, I hate to be the one to, to say this, but, you know, um, he's been a bust for, for them. And, uh, the draft began with Washington guard Markel Fultz, who was selected by the Philadelphia 76ers. Seen as the future of the organization, Fultz faced a significant shoulder injury early in his career, taking the NBA by storm, however, not in a good way, as it seemed like he forgot how to shoot almost entirely. Despite a barrage of bust allegations, Fultz has now rebuilt into a good role player for the Orlando Magic. Although a knee injury has put him out for most of the season so far, over the past couple years, there's no doubt that Fultz has saved his NBA career, and it'll be interesting to see if he can reach all-star status someday. The oldest ball brother was selected second overall by the LA Lakers, and despite quickly showcasing elite passing and defending ability, Lonzo struggled with three-point shooting and finishing. This saw him soon traded away in a deal for Anthony Davis, which saw him move to New Orleans. And at New Orleans, he completely revamped his shooting form and soon turned into a good three-point shooter. However, lingering knee and ankle injuries meant his good play would often be interrupted. He was soon traded to the Bulls and his game continued to improve. However, a significant knee injury meant we haven't seen Ball on an NBA court since January 2022. When he is on the court, Lonzo has shown he can be an elite level distributor, a great three-point shooter, and a good on-ball defender. We just have to hope that injuries do not completely destroy Lonzo's career. As for the third pick, the Boston Celtics did brilliantly by selecting Jason Tatum third overall. The Duke forward is a four-time All-Star and was voted to the All-NBA first team. And there's no doubt that he has developed into one of the best players in the NBA. The Celtics have found their future in Jason Tatum, who looks like he's gonna end the Celtics title drought in the near future. The highest picked player in this draft class who is currently without a team, things didn't really work out for Josh Jackson in the NBA. He played just two seasons with the Phoenix Suns before being traded to the Memphis Grizzlies. Jackson played a few years in the G League, but that wasn't enough to save his career, as Jackson has been without a team since January 2023. One of the main reasons why the Sacramento Kings have ascended in the last couple of years is due to the rise of De'Aaron Fox. The fifth overall pick has excelled over the last few years as a 25 point per game scorer who's also come through in the clutch time and time again. A great pick up by the Kings, he finally found some help around him and the only thing he's missing is playoff success. The lengthy forward Jonathan Isaac was selected sixth overall, but his time in the NBA has not been great. A great defensive big man Isaac tore his ACL in 2020 and did not play a game in the league until January 2023. An abductor injury cut his comeback short and Isaac is hoping to overcome those injuries and get back on the court. After five years of inconsistency for the Bulls, the 2022-23 season was a brilliant one for Larry Markadin with the Utah Jazz. He became an all-star for the first time as well as the most improved player in the NBA. A rangy shooter who averaged 26 points per game in the last season, Markkinen seems to be finally living up to his high potential. As for the 8th pick, the Knicks picked French point guard Frank Nilekina with this selection. In his first 6 seasons in the league, Nilekina failed to average more than 7 points per game across a season. Now with the Charlotte Hornets, Nilekina seems to have hit his peak as a backup point guard and he may not be in the league for much longer as he's simply not been NBA material. 
another point guard who hasn't lived up to their potential. Fans will be surprised to hear that Dennis Smith Jr.'s best season was his rookie year, where he averaged 15.2 points per game. Since then, his play has only gotten worse. Now with six different teams in six years, Smith Jr. never really lived up to his potential despite getting quite a few different opportunities. Although some injuries played a factor in this, he needs to lift his game or he's going to be out of the league in no time. Gonzaga big man Zach Collins went 10th overall to the Portland Trailblazers. Hoped to be the frontcourt hero to help Damian Lillard win big, Collins made some defensive impact, but lingering injuries put him out for significant time. After his recent move to the San Antonio Spurs, he's flourished in a rotation role alongside Victor Wembanyama, signing a big money extension with the team in October 2023. Kentucky guard Malik Monk went 11th overall in the draft. Despite being a lottery pick, Monk only ever started once for the Hornets, coming off the bench for four straight seasons. Although showing signs of a good scorer, the Hornets would soon let go of him, with LaMelo Ball being drafted in 2020, as well as off-the-court issues also playing a factor in this decision. He was soon traded to the Lakers, and after a single season where he was occasionally in the Lakers starting lineup, Monk was traded to the Sacramento Kings and has excelled as an efficient scorer and playmaker in the Kings rotation. The Pistons went with Luke Kennard 12th overall. Kennard struggled to find consistent form in the NBA with the Pistons, missing large chunks of time due to injury. Now having been traded to the Clippers, Kennard recently became one of the best three-point shooters in the league. He's led the league in three-point shooting percentage in the last two seasons and is now part of a backcourt rotation of the Memphis Grizzlies despite currently dealing with an injury. Originally picked up by the Denver Nuggets, the Utah Jazz traded for Donovan Mitchell on draft day and he hit the ground running from day one and has averaged more than 20 points per game across every season in his career, now averaging 28 points per game in his seventh NBA season. Mitchell is a four-time NBA All-Star who is now part of an exciting young roster with the Cleveland Cavaliers and there's no doubt he was a very smart pickup and a huge steal in this draft. The 14th overall pick in 2017 was Miami Heat star Bam Adebayo. The Kentucky big man has carved out a very nice career for himself despite being an undersized center. A two-time All-Star and four-time All-Defensive second team member, Bam is one of the best defensive players in the league. He's also an Olympic gold medalist and part of the Heat team that reached the NBA Finals in 2020 and 2023. Although he hasn't won a championship yet, it'll be interesting to see if he can achieve this in the coming seasons and bring a championship to Miami after coming so close multiple times. Another rangy forward, Justin Jackson has not been brilliant in the NBA. He's played for six different NBA teams across his career having not been able to impress as a starter with the Sacramento Kings in his rookie season. Jackson has barely played in the league over the last couple of years, playing the majority of his basketball in the G League. But still, Jackson is an NBA champion after being a part of the Milwaukee Bucks championship run in 2021, which means when he does retire, at least he'll still have a ring on his finger. The Minnesota Timberwolves certainly regretted trading for Justin Patton on draft night. He was a part of a deal that sent Jimmy Butler to the Timberwolves. But in Minnesota, Patton suffered repeated foot injuries on both his feet. He barely played for the Timberwolves and began to bounce around the league. Never able to consistently stay healthy, Patton has not played in the NBA since 2020. Just 22 games in the league is very disappointing for a first round pick. The Milwaukee Bucks selected Michigan forward DJ Wilson 17th overall. He played the majority of his rookie season with the team's G League affiliate, but was still signed to a third year option. Traded away by the Bucks in 2020, Wilson had a couple of very short stints with the Rockets and the Raptors, and is now playing in the G League with the Osceola Magic. It was UCLA's forward TJ Leaf who was selected 18th overall, and Leaf got a lot more opportunity in the NBA than you might expect becoming part of the Pacers bench rotation through his first couple of seasons. But after he failed to improve, Leaf was waived by the Pacers. And after a short stint with the Blazers, Leaf is now playing in China with the Beijing Ducks. John Collins was selected 19th overall and became the third power forward selected in a row. The Atlanta Hawks were thrilled with this pick 
as John Collins developed into a solid supporting act for Trey Young. A 22-point and 10-rebound per game season in 2019-2020 showed the promise of Collins. But his numbers have gone in the wrong direction in the last couple of seasons, despite no major injuries. Now with the Utah Jazz, Collins is still a very good NBA player, who still has all-star potential. The third Duke player selected in the 2017 NBA Draft, Harry Giles has really struggled to stay healthy in the league. He's had multiple seasons shut down due to injury, despite putting up some good numbers when he does get a chance on the court. The issue for Giles is that he missed two full seasons in the league, before playing in the G League where he again suffered a season-ending injury. Currently with the Brooklyn Nets, Giles has found himself back on an NBA court again this season. Another player of the 2017 draft class who are no longer in the league, Terence Ferguson has not lived up to potential. Having gone over to Australia to play professionally instead of going to college, Ferguson has struggled to improve in the NBA. Through three seasons with the Thunder, but put up just 6.9 points per game on 43% shooting from the field. Having last played in the NBA in 2021, Ferguson is currently playing with South African club Cape Town Tigers after stints in the G League, Greece and Poland. As for the 22nd overall pick, Jared Allen has succeeded so far in the league despite many big men selected before him. Having impressed as a full-time starter with the Brooklyn Nets, Allen has developed into an all-star caliber player since being traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now as a top shot blocker in the league, Allen is a part of an exciting Cavs roster featuring fellow 2017 draftee Donovan Mitchell. One of the few players in this draft class who's an NBA champion, there might not be a better defender from the 2017 draft class than OG Ananobi. A starter for the Toronto Raptors over the past few years, Ananobi led the league in steals last season while putting up 17 points per game. Now after recently being traded to the New York Knicks, it'll be intriguing to see if Ananobi can bring the presence to propel the New York Knicks to championship contention. Syracuse power forward Tyre Lydon was a part of a deal for Donovan Mitchell. With the Nuggets, Lydon played just 26 games in the NBA before retiring from basketball in 2021 and the Denver Nuggets will certainly regret choosing Tyler Lydon over Donovan Mitchell. The Latvian 7-footer Anzegs Pasenics was selected 25th overall by the Orlando Magic before being traded to the 76ers. He never played a single minute for the Sixers as he stayed in Europe after being drafted. A short two-year stint with the Washington Wizards is the only action Pasenic saw. He's back in Europe at the moment, playing for Real Betis in the EuroLeague. Despite earning All-Star Summer League first team honours in his rookie season, Caleb Swanigan played just 75 games in the NBA. He was a part of the Blazers rotation for a couple of years, also spending some time in the G League. After his NBA career fell apart, Swanigan sadly passed away from natural causes in June 2022. Utah forward Kyle Kuzma was traded to the LA Lakers on draft day where he used his frame and impressive scoring to become an important player for the young Lakers team. Relegated to the bench for the 2019-2020 season after Anthony Davis was traded to the Lakers, Kuzma ended that season as an NBA champion. The proficient forward has rebuilt his career after a difficult end to his time with the Lakers. Now a 20 plus point per game scorer, Kyle Kuzma will be hoping his performances can help turn around the struggling Wizards. The final player selected before Derek White was UNC center Tony Bradley. Bradley barely featured for the Utah Jazz while in the G League, being traded after his first full season in the rotation. After bouncing around the league, Bradley is now back in the G League with the Texas Legends alongside fellow 2017 draftee Justin Jackson. And that's it, the 28 players selected before Derek White Far from one of the best draft classes in recent times, but still with many future Hall of Famers in this class. Anyways, thanks for watching Sportsphere. How do you think Derek White shapes up against this draft class? Please let us know in the comments below. See you in the next video.